Hello, welcome to Garden Chronicles. My name is James David. And in today's video, I would like to talk about this particular setup that is actually hanging hanging plants along my gate where it is sort of like overwhelmed with so many plants and I'm planning to reset them, sort of like take off all of them and replant it. Initially, I was actually growing apicias and begonias here, but I it has been proved to be very challenging for me for the recent season uh, when the last time I have actually cultivated them, it was something like six months ago, towards the last year, December right up to February. <clears throat> and then eventually what has happened is that the plants slowly died and without me realizing I have been experimenting by placing some of the plants here and I started to find that this seems to be hardy and able to handle it. Uh, talking about maiden heaven, it was one of the most challenging plant ever because they just don't seem to do well and constantly I have to figure out what's happening and what to do. And But this particular time, over here in this part, it's sort of like if you can see it, the sun is coming up very strong. Oh my goodness, can you see? Oh, I can't even see. So, yeah, you can even see my shadow and this is where the sun is. So, in a way, I find that a reflected light because the sun doesn't shine on that. But this best where the sun comes in, like a rays of sun. And what I have found is that uh, fern seems to be doing very well here. Now, again, uh, this is Piper, it's supposed to be a bitter leaf. Uh, again, this is very experimental. Uh, what I like about it is the neon colors, which I spoke about earlier in my earlier video, concerning how they give effect on a normal common green plants. Now, what is beautiful here is actually my philodendron mikan. You can actually see that they have a slight red. I think this one will do better than this one. A slight red sheen, more on the context of uh, the 3D effect. In fact, to feel it, it has a little bit more on a velvety kind of a feel, more a satin feel. Uh, matured, this is matured leaf and you yeah, can even see that it does have these reddish tones at the back of the leaf. Uh, I find Mikan seems to be very hardy here and growing very well. Uh, I'm actually very surprised with this setup because uh, if you look at this, if I'm not wrong, this is called horsehead uh, philodendron or wylin, uh, binophilum philodendron. So I, I may have to check carefully again. But I find that this particular one is ever so glow, slow growing plant compared to this. Now, if you look at how Mikan has overwhelmed the whole place, you can see it. Actually, it's, it's a lot. It's have, it became invasive. In a way, it started to grow everywhere else. Now, this is another one. It's Decidia, which is actually growing in a small pot over here. But it has overwhelmed itself in growing everywhere. I have to untangle this. It's actually taken over my Spanish moss, and uh, I find that I had to redo this again. Previously, there was this uh, Rangoon creeper wine that was actually growing over here, and I just gave a very hard pruning so that it will be blooming on the next season. And so, this particular part is sort of like available for me to do some work on it. Now, as I mentioned that these are actually experimental and I find that uh, Zebra Trendescantia seems to do so well. Uh, but this is the problem. Can you see it's, close? <laughs> it's so leggy. It's so sad. Now, I may have to trim and do something about it and keep them in compact. And even this, yes, this is actually a string of hearts. Uh, beautiful, beautiful plant. Mm. But it's so stubborn and difficult for them to grow as what I want them to grow. 
uh, what is this syngonium white or white butterfly also appearing to be very finicky I'm not sure what is this okay so a bit of this and a bit of that and uh, even this uh, Kalesa Rippens it's known as pink lady also very finicky uh, there's some parts of the world if i'm not wrong like australia this is considered an invasive plant because of they seems to overgrow and very fast casting but over here it's not i think i purchased it about six three months ago and this is how it is it's ne never grow and never die thank god it didn't die but that's about that so I'm a bit skeptical whether I want to do something about this. So my idea here is that I'm going to report this whole thing. I'm going to take out all of this. And it's going to take a lot of work for me because it is tangled everywhere. I will show you the other side. Now coming to this side of it, I am actually having this. This is a bit shaded. Uh, so may have to receive some sunlight because it's also appearing to be not doing so well something like an asparagus fern so i'm going to layer this together with uh, maiden hair fern and you can see the mikan here which is overwhelmed itself oh, it's a bit messy here i think when a camera can't take it this was but Nasfern was actually the, the other side of it, but it was shaded with this Rangoon Creeper wine. So I had to put it over here because it's going to suffer a lot of burns. Now this is actually very temporary. I have to redo this. <laughs> so <laughs> my habit of overlapping pots and plants. And if you notice that it's, it, it is so temporary and so lazy kind of stuff. I have actually managed to get a Hoya. It never grew. Can you believe it? It's the variegated type. So I believe the the problem of the not growing very well is because lack of light. So I may have to place them the other side where we see much sunlight and see how it fares. This is a different type of Pleonia. I have the normal one, the watermelon one. Uh, with this recently I managed to get it. It's considered rare here because it's not common even among uh, not so uh, widely in most nursery. So I'm planning to have these two sets of it. And as I mentioned that uh, these are very much experimental. I may have to transfer this back to the container where I place all of my apicias. Uh, they are alive. But don't get me wrong, they will eventually die because this, they are so finicky. And the most finickiest plants I actually have are these. This is supposed to be a very easy plant, but it's not really happening. So I might have to put in by the sun side kind of thing. Let's see how it goes. Another most uh, difficult and rare plant, which I find is this uh, It's Piper. I forgot the specific name for it. But this is the red version. Uh, I managed to propagate few, but they are so finicky and they can easily die if they are being uh, disturbed or being upset. So, see how it goes. Actually, I had three different types, but right now I think all are disappearing. <laughs> I, I really don't know whether I want to continue. Uh, how do you mention this? Uh, whether I want to continue. Uh, cultivating them in my garden because they're so sensitive and finicky and they're not just growing you know you're like you really want them to grow and they're suffering to grow <laughs> no suffer not a plant to grow is dying i don't know see how it goes but uh with all things being said mikan is seems to be loving itself here you see the 3d effect you know the 3d effect you know the I just love that. I don't, I don't know what you call this. Is it corrugation? Is it uh, iridescent? Yeah, that's the word for it. Iridescent. Again, uh, I have actually 
propagated using bare stem uh, on this. It's it's supposed to grow and show its leaves the other side, but this is a sign that it's received too much water. So I have to redo this. Uh, okay, so, so this this is the pain that I have to undo and redo back everything because it's it's sort of like messy. Eventually it's going to be difficult for me to open the gate and close the gate of course. <laughs> it's, it's so overwhelming. In, in the beginning it was not like this. It was very beautiful. So, the, so that's the thing about plants, you see. They, they need constant uh, maintenance and care and pruning and cleaning. Uh, in failure to do so, and this is what happens. Uh, this is uh, another begonia that is trying to survive. So hopefully it works. And it's supposed to be a herb, something like a ginseng, jewel or opa. I love the flowers, so let me think about it, whether I want to put it the other side and see how it goes. So this is my before video. Catch you in my after video. I wish I was able to take shots as I manage them portion by portion, but it is going to disrupt my focus and my concentration. So I'll get back to you once it's done. Catch you later in my next video. Bye. This is the first time that I've actually recording me working my garden works here using a tripod. So I'm actually feeling very concerned and aware of the video in front of me the rep and the recording take place and sort of created more of a distraction to me <laughs> so hope you bear me seeing I, i'm just just not comfortable with this but just for this uh, tutorial and educational purpose i just like to share my thoughts on it so this is what i've done i've unpotted it uh, basically my style of doing it is uh, make it as easy as possible over here is actually the speed of uh, three times faster so it, the, the video is about 40 minutes over uh, but i have not uh, recorded the whole thing because i find that uh, i'm moving a lot everywhere and uh, it's sort of like a constant distraction for me to constantly press the buttons now over here I'm actually using a facial mask, the disposable type and I'm using it as a drainage hole here. Earlier I was actually using cotton fiber but I find that cotton fiber does drain out well but does not hold enough moisture and the plant seems to dry out faster when, when it comes to watering. So I hope this one works but I believe so it should be uh, because of the layers that is available at the at the mask uh, filaments at the at that portion here. Now I'm actually adding in uh, vermi compost and compost together. Here you can see the, how black it is. Just one thin layer will do, just to give a little bit of nutrients. I do not believe so much on the uh, non-organic fertilizer. Somehow it burns these plants and uh, so this is actually the rearranging of all the plants that I've uh, manage to uh, arrange them carefully and put them according to uh, their types which I want them to look good and that so basically uh, it, as simple as it gets so it's not so complicated just a matter of unpotting taking out the soil uh, breaking it up so a bit so that there will be a little bit of air movement within the uh, potting medium so this is basically the Piper Corcatum. This is the silver version and also the red version. They are very sensitive and finicky. So I'm not very sure whether it will pick up. I hope it does. Uh, one of the things that I want to share to you is that if you are reporting them, do it as soon as possible. Do not keep them in water or one day later and two days later and then decide to replant them. Especially when it comes to cuttings or a bare root stem or someone if a friend were to give to you uh, a cutting where the roots are actually aerial roots. 
uh, do at least put in some spe- specknum moss on it or some soil or something in between it because uh, what happens is that they do tend to lose humidity and dry out very fast so the moment immediately i have done this and i placed it i was actually watching over that in the evening time and they are still stable so i know it, it will not go through the stress uh, unlike others if you were to leave it uh, for few hours that's that's a goner for this piper so coming to the potting medium here basically what i'm using here is the first layer that actually using is the disposable mask followed by cotton fiber which is existing earlier followed by the existing soil mix actually i have not added anything because the compost the vermi compost itself is good enough nutrient for this particular plant here actually it is uh, coconut chips and sand so basically they are very fast training and easy to go through uh, when it comes to watering it doesn't uh, turn into a mud kind of a situation but it's it's more of a light easy and it's very suitable for this particular type of uh, plants especially piper and uh, philodendrons and ferns so, so these are the types that uh, does well and a- able to handle the weather uh, when it comes to over watering or under watering somehow they just hold a very good uh, portion when especially when it comes to challenging places as such as this first thing first is i'm actually removing off all the uh, mixed plants here actually i've taken out all those uh, earth stars of the chrysanthemum pus uh, and i'm planning to do it separately in some other places so sorting it out and figuring out uh, what where to put them yeah, this is actually the philodendron container and i find that the only two of this is actually slow growing the brazil and the horse head philodendron now it is known as a, a different name altogether so the names are constantly changing <laughs> i'm just not able to keep up with them anyway i placed the name above on this video hope that it's informative here i'm actually planting all the philodendron on a horizontal position not on a vertical side because i am not planning to have them on a totem pole or letting it climb over my idea here is that hopefully the there will be new shoot coming from the base and new plantlets comes out from there it may take some time or chances are it might even not happen but i'm just hoping that it will take place because uh, looking at this uh, this too seems to be super slow in comparison to mikan Later, I will show to you the video on what actually has taken place on the philodendron mikan. It has grown so widely, and and I've taken a lot of my time on just to reset that. Easily, I've managed to get into three containers of uh, cuttings in placing them in water with two separate pots where I placed in a totem pole and it's actually very full so in a way i'm surprised that the whole thing is actually coming from one singular pot i must say that when it comes to tradis kenta zebra it, it seems to be so much of a hassle sort of like a menace because it's it trail over so many places and because it's leggy so the particular plants are not so good looking and i have to do a lot of trims and cut so what i've done here is just i planted that using just the crown and i just kept aside the other long pieces i'm still figuring out whether i want to propagate it or throw it away so still still in a decision on that somehow i find that the broken pieces of string of hearts can be a little bit of a stress factor because if they don't survive then the whole piece is actually done for so that is a high risk if it's not been carefully pulled out from the root uh, base because i find that uh, because of all the plants were actually tangled each other so when, when i was actually removing it there's a lot of broken pieces on that so i there should be enough for it to pick back but 
just hoping that the rest might just pick back and grows back because uh, uh, you know a sp- uh, what you call this a uh, string of hearts can be very uh, sensitive plants so you can see how messy it is uh, this is actually the uh, piper the neon piper but i find that neon piper is very much a, s- a hardy plant so but it really needs sunlight because it won't really do well in shaded areas i find that planting them indoors inside here together with the anthuriums and they don't really do well the same to turn black and die so they really need sunlight for it so i find that when it comes to piper there must be some level of sunlight to shine on them at least about uh, the morning sun or evening sun a little about three to four hours uh, lacking which they can be looking very uh, uh, non-healthy now coming to these two pots this is the outside ones the one with asparagus fern with maiden hair ferns i'm also putting in the neon uh piper because i find that these actually are more on a sun lover type it has grown quite a bit so i'm i'm actually separating and putting them in two portions uh somehow i find that this particular one is a little bit more hardy compared to the colored types however they are not so much of a indoor type they do require to have uh, some level of sunlight on them or else they will just uh turn yellow and drop off the leaves and eventually just rot away so they they need sunlight that is one of the experiences that i find so they don't do so well with the anthuriums or and uh, uh, schismetagolysis so in a way they're not so much on the uh, dark shaded types this actually requires a little bit more on the sunlight also when it comes to asparagus fern i find that it is a little bit of a tuberous type there is some uh, portions of it when it comes to the root ball factor that are kind of tubers that is involved in it so i believe this particular one too is more on the sun loving type so in a way they do require some at least few hours of sunlight morning or evening sun lacking which they will turn brown and fall apart so do take note of that and they are not so much uh watering type uh, water lovers so do keep in mind not to over water because uh, due to the factor of their tuberous factor they can rot away if over water so pretty much that's about that it's pretty easy uh just resetting and placing them accordingly just to know exactly what you want to grow and how you want to grow makes a lot of difference because uh, <laughs> that was once an experience that I had when I just took down everything and unpot everything and I just suddenly realized that I just got panic and I really did not know exactly what I was actually doing and it was quite heartbreaking because uh, I really made a mess with unpotting and not able to to put them back in order so what i can say is that uh, taking a small bites a small small thing uh, how to say one small step at a time so over here is just four big pots not say big pots smaller four medium sized pots and <laughs> that keeps my sanity because <laughs> a lot of mess have taken place so i have just settled with these four pots and i have shot this video here on my work progress because i find that i needed the space and i've been constantly pushing and pulling the camera and the tripod and i'm worried that uh, my drop it and dirty the the camera together with the fact that it is switching off by itself because there's overload of information on the phone and uh, there's not enough space for it to be recorded so i hope that this particular video is good to go on the work in progress and i'll show it to you what uh, what is the end product uh, and you can see it clearly and more visibly without much of distraction another thing is that i've refrained from we are taking a video on my works with the philodendron mikan is because it is really a mess and i mean moving around and cutting and all that and uh, i will show you the end product of it and you can see how much i've able to uh, cultivate from this 
ones that actually grow uh, on my uh, gate and fence. welcome again this is my day one after the clearing of the mikans and you can see over here how I have actually settled it uh, this is the evening time now I just want to show to you some of the updates okay you can see over here that I have already reset them and they're actually looking good now I was a bit worried that it might actually burn out and dry but basically it did not so yeah look at that I have managed to put in the string of hearts here and to, together with this asparagus fern and maiden hair fern another portion of the, the same kind of thing just want to make it more of a uniform also together with this particular sedum so it's a bit of evening time so a little bit noisy here around the neighborhood because people are coming back but I just hopefully I can manage to get the videos before the end of the day so if you notice here this is a zebra tender skin here the two types that i actually managed to collect this is a common one and this is a red leaf type so earlier it was actually uh, falling down over here and it was quite leggy and messy and i've managed to reset them and keep this portion neat and clear Coming back to this particular portion where the pipers are, this is my main concern because these are fairly expensive and difficult to cultivate and believe me, they are challenging and difficult to care for. However, they are doing very well. So this is the medium that I use. I want to make an emphasis over here that always use sand coconut chips with compost. Do not use normal potting media, it will just kill the plant. So you have to be worried about all this because uh, they can easily be damaged and so basically is this so i have reset them and they're looking good actually so you can see the brightness that i'm actually getting it now this is the sun coming from my uh, left hand side this is evening time so this is the best it gets just want to mention to you that if you're having a challenging position where there's not no sun and there is sort of like like myself where I'm actually facing the northern side of my gate or even a window or southern side of a window or a gate these are the plants that you can actually cultivate without much problem uh, again uh, do not stop yourself from experimenting some plants actually do so well and some plants can be challenging but you'll never know until you try it out because each garden a different plant seems to do better <laughs> and i've seen so many many times that some plants do so well in certain gardens but can never do well in my part of my garden so this is my tip for today uh, don't be afraid to try it out and experiment but again if if cost is a concern don't go for the very expensive type especially that the like monstera variegated and those kind of stuff which is like cost a bomb go for the one that is a bit normal and and cheap and try your hands on it and see and if it is good then you can actually try it like for example first try the uh, philodendron brazil and if it works out go for a better ones so i have come to another tip that i want to mention to you uh, do be very concerned about watering because uh, once something as such as this has been replanted uh, hold on on the watering because the potting medium can be very wet and so uh, just to have a right balance of moisture and media is good so do pay close attention to it like today early morning it was raining very heavily so i refrain from watering because i know the humidity here is very high and followed by the facts that when things get too wet a lot of things start to rot especially the roots so do mind on the watering but if you notice that when it comes to leaves and uh, 
and they appear to be healthy looking so nothing much to worry about so basically is that uh, if you have any questions to put them in a comment below and I'll try my best as my ability based on my experience to answer them uh, and uh, share me your thoughts and what you think about it until then see you in my next video ah yes forgot to mention to you I I've not reset all my Spanish moss here but they are looking good because they are getting a clear sun earlier it was actually the Rangoon creeper wine that has been giving a horrible shape overly shade you see over here is badly burnt dried up because lack of sunlight so in a way uh, it's sort of like my house entrance and they seems to love it and I've also placed in the uh, but next one and it's back to stability stable so you notice here this is a different uh very vari variation and this is a different variation i'll talk more about this but nest one in my uh, coming videos but as for now these are my previews so see you again in my next video take care <laughs> and have a nice day bye